In landscape photography, we know the magic that light brings to our image, but so often color sometimes takes a back seat. But colors have this incredible ability to set a mood for an image and convey emotion. So whether it needs to be a feeling of stillness and quiet, or we want to grab attention and breathe life and energy into our emotions, it's not just light, but it's also color that conveys that emotion. So whether we're after vivid bursts of fiery reds and oranges, or we want calming and peaceful blue palettes, the ability to particularly pick the colors and adjust them within our image gives us a special kind of magical wand in the digital darkroom. That's why in the develop module, the HSL panel here and color panel give us a lot of power. And while it may look a little tricky at first, a little primer on the hue, saturation, and luminance, and what each is affecting in your image is going to open up a treasure chest of creative opportunities. So what is the HSL panel in Lightroom? It's a precise way to target and adjust global colors within an image, where HSL stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue is the actual color within the image. So it's like picking a spot on the color wheel or picking that exact crayon out of the big box. The saturation is the intensity or power of the color, the boldness or how muted it is, where the luminance is the overall lightness or darkness of a color, how much white or black is injected into it. The power behind all of these sliders within Lightroom is that you can control any combination of all of these options. So you have the ability to target the hue of the red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta colors. And these eight colors combined actually do cover the entire spectrum. So if we're talking just RGB color alone, that's close to 17 million options of targeted adjustments of just the color alone. Let's first talk about making hue adjustments and adjusting the image in our color wheel. And I'm going to give a little word of caution first because with any of these and for hue in particular, a little goes a long way. So we really don't want to take a forest scene and make it this psychedelic craziness. But you may see in some of these examples, I take it a little bit too extreme just to show you an example. So again, a little goes a long way. Let's take first though, and actually show with a great example of the actual color wheel so you can see all of the colors and what is and is not being impacted. Let's focus on the red up here and the reds down here within the color wheel. As I shift things, say, towards the left of the slider and impacting the hue, you'll think you'll see reds go towards more of a pink color, magenta, or if I shift things to the right, the red is going to shift to more of orange colors. So again, I'm changing the actual color of how we see the reds in the image. If we look at a real world example here, let's say this flower, the color is a little off and I want to impact that. I can take the purple slider and I can adjust the purple to the left and make it a little bit more blue, or I can impact it and shift the slider a little bit to the right and make it a little bit more pink. And a great way to remember which way or how you're impacting the color is any of the color you shift to the left, you're going above it, or if you shift to the right, you're going below it. So just imagine that this kind of snakes down, if you will. So again, purple to the left will make the flower more blue, and purple to the right will make the flower more magenta. The last thing I want to point out with hue is, again, this is just the color being impacted. So if we focus on this flower here, and the parts that are really light and the parts that are really um, bold or intense with color have a lot of saturation. As I move the slider, the lightness and everything, it's not changing. The hue is actually changing and that's an important thing to note. So it is just the color that we're impacting. We can change the other stuff with the saturation and the luminance. Next, let's focus on saturation. And we're going to go back to our color wheel example here. Saturation is our color amplifier where we can make and boost things so they're really vibrant and bold, or we can fade things so they're more muted and kind of just seamlessly blend into the tapestry of a composition. Now, in general, our raw files are kind of muted, so there is always a desire to boost colors in some respect. So most people find the basic panel and you'll see the saturation slider here. And it always looks better from a raw file if you kind of just boost this a little bit here. 
But what you're doing with the saturation slider in the basic panel is you are boosting the saturation of all of the colors. So all of these greens, all of these magentas, everything is getting pushed. And often that really isn't what we want to do. So instead, by going to the saturation in the HSL panel, we can pinpoint exactly to say, I want this flower to be a little bit more intense in color. Again, I'm going a little bit further than I normally would, actually a lot. <laughs> or I want the greens to be a little bit more muted and fade into the background. So this is our way to pinpoint exactly what one or two colors we wanna pop in our composition and desaturate the others just slightly to fade into the background so we can create that separation of color in the scene. So now we can talk about luminance, which is really kind of the Jedi master of lightness or brightness. And if we watch these reds, it dictates how much white is injected or lightness into the image. So the red becomes brighter or how much black is injected if we go to the left and the red becomes darker in the scene. So we can really play with the directing a spotlight or creating drama because again the eye is drawn to the brightest spot of a scene so here within the forest we can target the greens and we can make them a little darker which gives a very different feeling than if i put the luminance up on the greens and make this a little bit more bright or morning light have a little bit more sunlit warmth to it and in this way we can kind of give a boost to certain colors and spotlight the subject or darken down the colors you wish to just kind of recede or not have the eye be drawn to as much. Now let's talk about what's the difference between HSL and color in the panel and how can you use both to your advantage. So first, anytime you click on hue, saturation, or luminance, these change, or you can click on all and you'll see all three hue, luminance, and saturation options within the eight main colors. Now, when you click color, it's simply just another way of looking at it. Here under HSL, all of the eight colors for your hue are collected together. All of the eight colors for your saturation are collected together. And if we look at color, it's simply reversed where the hue, saturation, and luminance for red are grouped together, for orange are grouped together, for yellow are grouped together, and so on. Now, while this does seem tidy, what I find is in real life, colors are not exactly straightforward. So often they're a mix of two or three colors. And sometimes this is just a lot more clicking until I pinpoint exactly what I'm trying to find. Instead, I do find working with the HSL panel is easier and here's why. Because there's the secret gem right here next to all three, which is the targeted adjustment tool. And what this allows me to do is let's find a better example. Let's take this flower here. I can say, okay, I want to adjust this flower, but I'm having a difficult time because there are a lot of different shades here. So I think something is red, but it's not really working. What you can do is pick up that target adjustment tool and you can pinpoint exactly the point of the image you want, click down, and then you can either drag up or down. And what it does is show you this is all magenta in here that I'm changing. But let's say I clicked over here more. Ah, so now this is red and orange. So what it's doing is targeting the exact spot of the image that I click on those exact pixels and telling me what hues are there that I have to change. I can do the same thing with luminance, click down. And now I'm only affecting that inner portion which if I scroll down is actually the magenta color, which is not necessarily what I would have picked right off the top of my head. So that's the targeted adjustment tool. It's something that I really love. And another quick tip is if, let's say we make a big, well, not, apparently I can't make a mess very fast, <laughs> but if you make a big mess and you hold down the Alt key, you can reset these panels. So I'll hold down Alt, click, Alt, click, alt, click. And that's a really great way if you've just gone down the wrong rabbit hole to quickly change everything and get back to square one to change things again. 
The last thing I want to touch on is how is the HSL panel different than the calibration panel in Lightroom because they both manipulate colors in your photos but they serve very different purposes and are different in how they adjust the colors in your photos. So if we go back to our color wheel example and open it up, let's pay attention again to the reds but also I want you to pay attention to the blue, the green, and the yellow because when we adjust the hue let's say the blue actually will keep with the red and we adjust the red hues we are impacting the colors but the blue the greens and the yellows are staying the same because we are only impacting the pixels that are seen as red or categorized as red whereas if we go up to the calibration panel what the calibration panel is doing is taking those primary three red, green, and blue channels, and they are saying adjust the overall color balance of how these are blended together at the pixel level to create all of the colors of the images. So ultimately, it impacts the color cast within the scene. So if I impact the red here, again, watch the blue, the green, and the yellow, everything is shifting. And everything is shifting if I go to the left or the right. So within the calibration panel, we'll move the blue here. Again, everything is impacting. Whereas if I just went down to the HSL color and changed the blue, I'm not impacting the red here at all. So just to summarize, the calibration panel is kind of more useful when you have to achieve a specific color effect or you want to correct a color cast in your image. So it's a global way to customize the color interpretation of your raw color data from your sensor, which is very different than impacting the overall color channels within your image. I hope that's covered everything you wanted to know about the HSL panel in Lightroom and empowered you to be your own composer of color in your images. So until next time, cheers to a happy Lightroom experience. Mm -hmm.